when people think of wildlife in Alaska or picture an Alaskan ecosystem, probably the first thing that comes to mind is not a boreal toad. But they're actually very important species. Um, first, because they are a source of prey for a lot of other species. They are really a species that hasn't got a whole lot of uh, time and study given to them. And so uh, nobody even really knows what their habits are aside from the ponds they come to to breed in. They don't really know where they go for the rest of the summer or for the winters. Boreal toads live very mysterious lives. They are most easily spotted this part of their range in the spring when they congregate at their breeding ponds. But outside of the spring and summer, it's not really well known where boreal toads go. Since they're not that exotic seeming of a creature, they haven't been studied in great depth like bears have. <laughs> Uh, additionally, boreal toads uh, transfer nutrients from the aquatic to the terrestrial environment. So they're considered an ecological conveyor belt. Uh, so they do serve some important roles. Western toads have rapidly declined in large parts of their range um, over the last 30 years. So one of the questions that our monitoring program hopes to answer is whether or not boreal toad populations here are declining or if they've stabilized. I went out on two different monitoring trips and the first one we went over to uh, the Dai area. So we walk to the pond and then we start filling out a data sheet. Um, and that data sheet records all sorts of habitat and weather variables and it also records data on any amphibians that we encounter in the field. We were actually really lucky to find a good number. I think we found 10 or 12 adult toads as we walked along. Um, and pretty much the way finding them works is as you carefully sweep your foot, they hop so they don't get stepped on and uh, use that Ziploc bag and the gloves to pick them up and put them in there so they don't hop away while you're doing similar measurements to their arm length, how wide their mouth is. We record every adult, juvenile, uh, tadpole or egg mass that we see. And we got to hike off trail a little bit uh, to a little stream and uh, when we found that it was just teeming with tadpoles. Uh, when we see tadpoles we have to estimate the number of tadpoles present and the area that we cover is uh, usually quite large. A single survey can take up to two hours of carefully walking along the perimeter. Something that I was really interested to find out that I hadn't known was uh, you got to change your gloves and bag out for every individual toad because there's a disease that can be passed through their skins, a fungus, and you definitely don't want to hurt the animals you're studying. All amphibians uh, use both the aquatic and the terrestrial environment. And additionally, they have porous skin, which makes them very sensitive to a lot of environmental variables. They can, in a sense, be thought of as a canary in a coal mine. But to try and find out where they're going outside of the breeding season, one aspect of this program is to actually put tiny radio transmitters onto boreal toads with a little belt um, and release them um, midsummer after the breeding, uh, after egg masses are no longer being laid, and then to track their movement into the fall and hopefully locate their hibernaculum so that those can be protected um, and not disturbed. Because they're so highly sensitive, any declines that we detect in boreal toad populations can signal to us greater environmental problems that might exist. Problems that might not have been able to have been detected in other means or as quickly.